Hello everybody and welcome to another Maya tutorial. Today I am going to be showing you how to make a toaster in Maya. Um, a few things to cover first before I get started. Um, if you notice, I am now recording this video on a PC. Um, I will be for the remaining videos. Um, I will be saying the PC shortcuts. Um, I will say the Mac ones if I can remember but usually they are the same. Control on a PC is control on a Mac in Maya. Um, except for ones like copy and paste and such, that's command. Uh, I'll try to remember to, to say if they're different, but keep that in mind. Um, also, this video I'm gonna be going kind of fast um, because it's kind of expected that you would have seen my videos before this where I show all the tools in more depth like insert edge loop, uh, extrude, bevel, tools like that. Um, so if it is too fast, rewind it, watch it again. If it's a tool you're not familiar with, go back, look at the video for that tool, but I'm just trying to keep it in a reasonable, a reasonable length so it's not you know, like two hours long or something ridiculous. Okay, so now that's out of the way, let's get started. Um, I'm gonna start by making a cube. I'm gonna go to my top view to draw it out. I'm um, just making an arbitrary size. And about like that. Let's pull it up. So we have a nice toaster shape. I'm gonna make a two. I'm making a two-slot toaster today, um, with uh, one pole in the middle. Uh, it's a little too wide, so I'm gonna hit R, to scale it, scale it down a little bit, uh, about like there, about like that. I don't know. Just playing around with it. I now need to give it some divisions. So, I'm going to make this three, this one, let's give it four, and this one five. Um, those might seem like arbitrary numbers, but what I'm getting at is I need to make slots out of the top with these faces. I need to make a slot out of the front with these faces. So I needed at least, I needed an odd number. And I figured it'd be easier to extrude if there was if it was a little smaller, closer to the size of the actual slot. And then I'll make a base with whoops. Whoops. With these faces. So the slot's actually only gonna be these three. And then the base will be these. And then I'll extrude feet out of these faces. Okay. So first, I'll do the slots. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my top view and I'm gonna select, oh, if you're in wireframe, just hit five to go to shaded. Um, I already had my open and I already had it set, so. Um, I'm gonna select the top ones like so. Then I'm gonna come to the side view and I'm gonna deselect the bottom ones. So I just have the top. And then going to extrude all of these. Make sure keep faces together is turned on right here with a little checkbox. something about like that. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is so when I bevel the edge, I get a clean bevel um, because these I don't want my slots affecting the edges right here. Um, I'm going to be doing the same thing to the front of this face as well to avoid these issues. Um, okay, so now we have those. I'll select these three on either side. Extrude. About like so. 
extrude again, pull the slots down. Uh, I just want to make sure they don't hook through the bottom. About like that. Right click, go back to object mode. Um, these slots aren't quite wide enough for me, so I'm going to go to my top view. And then I'm going to go to vertices. And drag a box around those, and drag a box around those. And I'm going to scale them this way. Like so. Well, yeah, somewhere around there, somewhere in between. I like that. Two nice, nice size slots. Okay, so now I'm going to do the front. So I'm going to select my top three faces. Well, actually, I need to select all my faces first on the front. Um, cool trick is you select um, a series of faces in the middle, and then you hit Shift right symbol it grows your selection for you um, this gets more useful when you have a lot more faces um, then I'm going to extrude these hit the scale square scale these down um, I want to keep it kind of even in the middle keep this border about the same on the edge about like that I'm actually going to shift it up just a hair, or I'm going to scale it up, actually. Don't need much, just enough to get a clean bubble around these edges. Okay, now I'm going to select these three again. I'm going to hit Extrude again. I'm going to scale it. Okay, now see, here's a problem. Um, usually, if you're doing local face, it's fine with doing that. But obviously, this face has a different orientation because of the way um, I extruded it. So what I need to do is undo what I just did, hit this little power button symbol here, It'll turn sideways. This will globally position the manipulator, so I can hit that, scale it down, and it will scale the same for all of them. Scale down for my slot, for my handle, about like that. Then I'm going to take my extrude tool again. Pull it back in for our slot. About something like that. So it's looking pretty good. We have a slot for the front. We have our slots for the top. Not too shabby. Now I need to do the base. This might cause some problems, but we'll do our best. Um, so the easiest way to select these is just going to be select, drag a marquee around, make sure you only have the bottom row and the bottom selected, like so. This is going to cause problems. Um, okay, so first, because okay, so if you see, when I extruded the slot, it made this funny looking quad right here. It's still a quad, but if I try to bevel this edge, because what I'm intending on doing is pulling this, centering it, pulling this out like so. And I want to bevel the edge around here and here. Um, there's a possibility it won't bevel right right here because of that funny quad um, and the way that intersects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to object mode, deselect those faces. I'm going to insert an edge loop. Insert edge loop tool. I covered this in a previous video. Um, click and drag faces like so. For some reason it's not s keeping it flat, so I will go to my scale, flatten this up, so we have a nice clean border. I'll scoot it up a little bit like so. Okay, now I'm going to select my faces from my bottom, drag a box, make sure I only have those selected. Um, take my extrude tool, center it, Shoot out. Shoot out this way. It's a little too much. Get in. I'll just play around with it until I get a nice little lip. Like a black plastic base it's sitting on.
And you know what? I think that base is too tall. So I'm going to undo this. I'm going to move this edge loop down a little bit. Repeat the process I did. Go to faces. Try to box around there. Um, extrude. Center it. Scale. Um, go to my top view. This will give me a better um, idea of what I'm doing. Something about like that. That works. Okay. So, we have our slots. We have the beginning of our base. We need to pull our feet out. Um, I'm going to select all of these faces and come in here, drag a box around the side to deselect everything but the bottom faces. Just like I did with the top, I'm going to pull these in. Um, this is probably going to freak out a little bit. Nope, it actually works. Looks fine. Uh, scale it in. Just enough to give me a clean area to bevel. Okay. Okay, so I have an issue here. This edge loop, for some reason, is not straight. So I need to straighten that up. So I can do several ways. I can just like vertices. I'll just do edges. Um, shift click that one. I should select those. Okay. Well, I have to do them one at a time. So you select with control drag a box. Hit R for my scale tool. Scale it down. Tighten them together. like those. Repeat the same process. So I have nice, clean, and then I'm going to shift, shift double click on those, and then I'm going to scale these together to give my feet a little more surface area. <laughs> right click, go to face, select these four faces, and shift, um, and then hit extrude, <laughs> not shift click, extrude, pull these down. A little bit, uh, about like that. All right. So here's the here's our toaster. It's coming along. We have our feet. We have our base. We have our slots. So now I'm gonna round stuff off to make it look more a little more like a toaster. Hopefully this works this time. So shift clicking edges. I want to make sure I get all the edges. If you miss edges when you're, whoops, when you're beveling, it will cause funny geometry issues because it has to go from uh, multiple. Okay, so see, here's a problem. I don't want these edges. So drag a box. Um, I need to make sure. I don't want these edges. So I'm just control dragging a box around those to deselect them. So I think I got all the edges I want. I want a ring around the bottom. I want a ring around there. I want a ring around the top. And I want the vertical edges as well. Okay, so I'm gonna hit bevel. Um, I have a tool for it. If not, it's under edit mesh. Bevel, hit the dialog box. Um, play around with these settings a little bit. Try something like uh, 0.9 to start off with. I'm totally guessing right now. Uh, do 4. Apply and see where that gets us. Okay. Not half bad. Um, it's gone a little squirrely on us on some of these corners but it's within the acceptable realm. Let's make sure it didn't make anything tries. Don't pull out any weird faces. Bevel, you kind of have to be careful with bevel. You can screw up your geometry really fast. Aha, here's an error. Um, I accidentally had that under edge selected, so I need to undo that. Shift, 
uh, I mean, control click that, control click that. Make sure I don't have anything else under here selected. And I guess while I'm at it, I could um, select these rings around here and bevel them, because I'll probably just bevel them later. And that way it'll be consistent. So, I think we're good. Nope, we're not. Just like that one. Okay, um, let's give that a go. See where we're at. Alright, so. Looks good through there, and around there, and down around here. That looks better now that problem. And we have, oops, I forgot this foot. So this is the process I always follow when I bevel something because I hate, hate, hate to get, you know, an hour, an hour after I beveled and realize that there was some sort of geometry error that I have to go back and fix that could have been avoided if I had been careful when I was beveling. So I'm always really careful about it, because of past experience. Okay, we don't have any tries there. Those are all quads. Looks like our feet got rounded this time. Um, coming down through here looks good. Okay. Looks good. So it gives us our toaster a little more humanistic feel to it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do the slots or not, probably not, because I think it would be more bother than it's worth. Okay, so, I'm close the little bevel dialog box. So now, I need to make the, uh, the, the control for the slots here. Um, it'll just be a series of cubes, so let's take this, go to my top view, Turn on wireframe. Um, make a little cube like so. Zoom out a little bit so I can see. I want it. It's just a little piece that slides up and down in there, like that. Scoot it up into position while I'm at it. Okay. Um, Long, and I probably want to be turn. I probably want to be square. Um, let's get that down a little bit. Scoot it in. I don't know. This this part will be inside another cube anyway, so it doesn't really matter that much, I guess. Something like that, um, and then make our little cube for the handle. Um, yet again, I'm gonna go to top mode draw this that's too narrow but I'll fix that later come in here about e tall okay so I'm gonna scoot that in I'm gonna scale it up this way and up this way scoot it down a little bit that was poor, poor choice Scale it in a little bit more. Play around with it until I get in the position I want. Um, I notice that it's not aligned with my control here. So I'm going to cl click my, um, my cube, then click my control. Go to the modify align tool. Center it up. Square it up that way too while we're at it. Okay, hit W to get out of that tool. Pull back. Just like these vertices. Scale them around a little bit. And just for fun, put a vertice uh, edge loop there. 
go back to my vertices. No. Yeah, it's not going to play very nice. Pull those down, pull these up a little bit. Something like that. Just our little push thing control for our uh, toaster. Okay, so um, we're almost done with the modeling. Um, just make a simple cord coming out of the back for added details. Um, you could, a uh, previous video, I covered extruding on a path and other things. You could go in and you could add grill in the middle um, uh, by making curves and duplicating them, or you could just make a, a just a straight grade of cylinders. Um, but for time reasons, I won't do that because I'm already 20 minutes in and I still have to do the shaders and rendering for this. So I'm going to come in the back and I'm going to make oh, our bevel I messed up there. Okay, so I'm going to try to fix this by going to edge mode. S double clicking to select the ring of edges. And go to normals, soften edge. Seem to have gotten rid of it for the most part. Um, looks like this ring is also having issues, so I'll shift double click that as well. I have a soften edge tool right here. Normal soften edge. Go back to my object mode. Looks better. Okay, so if you zoom in and see stuff like that, just just try to try to address it see what the issue is. Um, I guessed that it was my normals were hard and they shouldn't have been because it was making a really hard line right there where everywhere else was soft and round. <laughs> so anyway, just something to keep in mind. Um, okay, so I'll just make a little cord shape here that we'll use. Um, there's several ways you could do it. I'll probably just do a cylinder. Go to my this view, draw it out like so. Our height doesn't matter because we're just going to be deleting. Actually, I shouldn't have done that. I should have given it height so I could delete the faces easier. A cylinder, drag it out, fill it up to give us some depth. Select our faces. Delete. I covered extruding on a path earlier. Um, that's what I'm doing right here. So if I'm going a little fast, maybe go back and watch that video if you don't understand it. Or, or just follow along if you're good. Um, pull it to the back of our toaster. Pull it around here. I need to make our curve now to extrude on. So I'm going to go to curves, um, EP curve tool. I'm going to go to my top view here. Um, this is where my cord is going to be. So I'll just uh, click here, 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 here. And then I'll make a simple little plug at the end. Okay, go back. Whoa, what am I doing? Uh, go back here. W. Um, center the pivot. Pull it up. Like so. Um, I don't like how much of an angle that comes out. This is too tight to there, so I'm going to right click and go to Control Vertex. Um, I made a Bezier curve. That's why I have these handles. I cover curves in my issue on a path video as well. So if you're not familiar with what I'm doing, go back and watch that video. Um, pull these around a little bit. Pull that out. Pull that so it's straight. Pull that in. Pulling these around, making it 
look cool, look more like how I want it. Um, these these handles work similar to the pen tool in Illustrator, so if you're familiar with that, it's um, pretty easy to pick up. Right click, go back to object mode, to my curve. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my cylinder, move it down. I'm gonna hit F to focus it on so I can get it kind of lined up where I want it. And then I'm gonna pull it back. Probably I'll turn on X-ray mode. It's this little button up here. It allows me to see through my objects. So I can line it up with the bottom of the curve. Pull it back some more. You want to make sure that your your beginning face is um, before your curve starts. Otherwise, it goes backwards and then forwards, and so you get like overlapping geometry and weirdness through there. Okay, so that selected, I'll shift to select my curve, hit the extrude button, come down here to my divisions, change this to 50, that is not nearly enough, so we'll try like 100, and I just realized a problem, that cord is freaking huge, okay, so I need to undo that before I extruded. Turn X-ray mode back on so I can see what I'm doing. Control, select my curve. I need to scale my cord down considerably. Something like that. Um, and you could do, uh, some cords have two sides on them. Uh, kind of like a, a figure eight shape, infinity shape, turned on the side. Uh, figure eight, on, turn on the side or an infinity shape. Uh, you could do that. You could get a cube and you could manipulate the faces, or I could come in here and manipulate the vertices of this to be that more that shape, but I'm just gonna do a round one. Just because I'm lazy, I guess. Um, I like round chords. Um, hit extrude. Just following the same steps I did earlier. Change my divisions to a hundred. Something like that. Object mode. Throw an X-ray off. Okay, so not bad. Um, not half bad at all. We're almost done. Uh, just need to make a simple little plug for it. And then we need to first, let's put in a uh, ground plane. I'm gonna come up here and select my polygon plane. Click and shift and drag plane out. Some size. So, I'm going to have a couple options. I can either move the toaster or I can move the plane. I'll probably just move the plane because it's already selected. Go to my side view. I'm on the screen line, just barely touching the bottom of those feet. Like so. Okay. So now, what I need to do is... I need to select my curve. This is probably not going to let me. So I'll just pop open my outliner over here. Set my Bezier curve. Um, hit this isolate selected button. So I can right click that and go to my control vertices and then hit that again. It'll take me out. But now I have control over my points of my curve and it won't select my geometry. So I want this sitting pretty close to the ground. Maybe I should be in my side view for this. So I'm not pulling it through my ground plane. This one will be slightly off the ground because I'll have a plug plugged into it. Pull that down. Okay, so that's not gonna work. I need a different view. Just like that. And that. Nope. Nope. So turn back on X-ray to see what I'm selecting. Okay, so I need to select this and this one. Pull them down. I 
like that. Tweak this one a little bit. So it gives it a more gentle curve away from the toaster. Get space to go back to my perspective view. Turn extra mode off. Okay, so whoops. We have our cord is sitting on our ground plane right now, which will be our counter top. We'll make a simple simple shader for that. I already see make our plug. So I'm gonna pull uh, something about like that. Pull that up. Nothing too fancy here. Set my vertices. Scale them in. Um, fun, I'm going to select these two. Oops. Okay, so here's another thing I'm going to use. I say select. I'm going to select my plug. And I say select so I can see it better. And hit F. To focus or fit it. Um, select these faces. I'm going to hit extrude. I'm just going to make a little indent in the middle. That little grippy part of a plug. Definitely not necessary, but I'm doing it for fun. Um, hit extrude again. Pull it down a little bit like that. Just gives a little geometric detail here. Like so. I could go and I could put ribs in it and other things. I'm not going to bother with that. Something like that. Uh, I need to move that into place. Also, I need to make this back part narrower. So I'll select those vertices. Scale that down a little bit. Whoops. I'm going to right click go to object mode. Select the object. So our plug is sticking through the ground plane right now, so I'm going to rotate it until it's level, then I'll pull it up. It's a little big. Actually, this is a little long. A little that way. It's fine height-wise. Uh, I need to rotate it a little more because I scaled it. Pull it back. Pull it up a little bit. So it's not sticking through the ground. Like that. Um, I'm guessing on scale here. Uh, you could get really exact and you could go measure your toaster and see exactly how big your how big your toaster is and use the grid and decide count out how many squares it is when you're drawing your cube and such but I'm just winging it um, just having a f making a fun little model here um, the easiest way to do the prongs out of the plug I'm not gonna ground make a grounded plug um, so I'll just make some narrow little cubes here it in like that. Rotate it. Whoops. I missed my rotate. And go to side view so I can make sure this lines up properly. Something like that. It's too long. vertice mode. I'm going to scale these down a little bit. Actually, I'm going to add an edge loop in. And then I'm going to shift select my edges. So I'm in edge mode already. Oh, let's see. That didn't work. So I'm going to go to vertices. Shift select those. Actually, no. I want Scale these down a little bit. And then I can take this face, extrude it, pull it out, scale it down, like so. Just kind of give us a nice little plug shape, a uh, prong, plug prong shape. 
It's a little too thick, narrow it down, it's a little too tall. Um, I could I could make a little cylinder, I could do a billion difference, but I don't think it's necessary in this situation. You could if you certainly could if you wanted to. I have a tutorial covering billion difference, if you desire. Um, and then I'm gonna control D or Command D on a Mac. Pull this one over like so. Object mode, deselect it. Okay, our toaster is modeled now. Now I just need to make the shaders for it. So I'm going to open up my hyper shader. Okay, um, I am going to put a well. We'll make it fun and we'll put my materials on these. I have a video introducing these. Um, you could certainly use a blin if you're more comfortable with that. Um, and fongs. I'm going to use my material X. will also give you a little more experience in it. Okay, so I'm going to select my toaster in general. And I'm going to dump this texture on it. Um, I'm going to select the texture. I'm going to name it. Um, Poster Chrome. Got my attribute editor. Presets drop down. Change it to Chrome. Okay, so now I need to make a uh, plastic for the base. Black plastic. So I'm going to make another my material X. Like so then I'm gonna have to come in here the easiest way would be to go to the front view like so select my edges and then shift I mean control select those edges so I only have the base part selected right click assign material to selection and you have to hold down right click to get that menu it's like most uh, right-click menus in Maya. Uh, I'm gonna minimize that. Um, I can get up my shader over here. Right until X. Preset. Um, glossy plastic. Change the color to black or a grayish color. So, um, I want highlights only, so it's not going to reflect anything. It'll just give it a highlight. And I'll select, go to object mode, select my pole, and select my plug. And I'll put that on it. Oh, I need to name this. This is my black plaid. Stick. Um, and then I'm going to select my cord while well, I need to make a shader first. So I'll make another Maya Material X. Reset. Cover. Place. Um, select my cord. Right click. Assign material to selection. I need to give this a name. I'll say. Uh, Black rubber. Okay. So, oh, and then we need to give something to our ground plane. So, open my hyper shader again. Sorry, I'm used to working with multiple monitors. And I have multiple monitors, but you can't see them, so. Um, so, go to my materials. Actually, I'm just going to make this surface a fong. For simplicity's sake, middle click and drag it on my plane. Come in here to my color. This is something new. I haven't showed yet, I don't think. Um, I'm going to put an image or a pattern instead of a color. So I'm going to hit the little checkered box. I, I probably showed this at one point. I'm going to select my grid. Uh, I'm going to hit my textures so we can see this is my grid. This is going to be my... Um, 
counter top, roughly. So I think I want to have it repeat a few more times, maybe like 12 and 12. It doesn't show up accurately, it gives us a rough idea. Um, okay, so if we hit render, check our render settings. Uh, I already have it, I would recommend mental ray, um, production quality rendering. I already have that, I already have that set by default. Um, I also up my size. And I'll lower it. Okay, so bring up our render window and hit the render button. And away it goes. Okay, so you can see we have a few problems here. Um, if you do Maya material, oh, I forgot to add a shader to the prongs on the plug. I'll probably just do the chrome. Um, if you do a Maya material, um, you're going to have the issue of it's it's perfectly reflective. It's very aggressive, and so it's reflecting black nothingness. So a way around this is we make a set for it. So I'm just going to select a box, shift click it, um, go to render stats, double sided opposite. And then I'm going to select the box and scoot it down. And then I'm going to scale up my plane. And I could have just as easily have um, made the bottom face this texture instead. So let's give that. I'm going to lower my size again. I'm going to do 800 by 800. Pull this up. Do another little quick render. Okay, we're getting closer. Uh, we need to add in some lights. So we're gonna go to create lights, spotlight. Hit W to move it. We're gonna move it up for my lighting, see where I'm pointing it, um, move it up, pull it down a little bit, oh, well, I'm here, I'll select my little prongs, W, oops, Q, just like that, I'm just going to put on the chrome shader for those, sound material selection, close that, Render that, see where we're getting. Okay. So it's not playing very nice with us right now. So I'm actually going to change the metal, the chrome metal. Um, I'm going to fake it. I'm going to my, well, not my outliner, my hyper shader. Select my chrome. I'm going to change the preset to copper, and then I'm going to take the color um, to white. That's a quick way to get white, is if you drag it all the way to black and then back up, it's white. Um, so let's re-render that. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so I can see it better. Still not perfect. Um, I'm gonna add in an ambient light. Soften this light up a little bit. Change the penumbra angle. Um, create lights, ambient light. Somewhere like that. Oh, I need to turn shadows on my spotlight. So my spotlight, go to shadows. Use ray trace shadows. Uh, Re-render that. See where we're getting. Okay, um, we're getting closer now. Um, it's a little grainy. Maybe I'll try Chrome again and see. Whoops. 
Let's see if we can get it to react a little better this time. And sh the dealing with shaders and getting them how you want is simply a matter of just playing with the settings and playing with the settings and playing some more with the settings. There's no cut and dried, uh, right or wrong, really. Okay, that works. Um, I'm gonna lighten up my tile a little bit. I don't know many people that have black tile countertops. I'm sure there are some. I've never seen any. I'll lighten up my fill color. Let's make it white with slightly gray grout. Uh, I'm gonna do that again. Okay, so now the problem we are having is it's blowing out. Uh, I'm blowing it out. So I need to darken this a little bit more. Maybe I'll change this to a light um, blue color. Oh, something like that, maybe. Under that again. Okay. I'm not unhappy with that. So, um, when you're doing your renderings, uh, I mean, this is obviously isn't perfect, and you could play around with it more, um, and you might get a better result um, by you if you're using like normal lights and stuff. If you if you just use like a fong and blend shaders and stuff, such, um, but this gives us a really really reflective. Chrome. I have our little plug over here. We can make our cord white. We can make our base white. In fact, maybe I'll do that just for fun. Um, so, my hyper shader, black plastic, change it to white. Black rubber, change it to white. Re Render this. Okay, so that's actually more friendly. Um, of a look. We have some funny shadows going on here. I would maybe put a, another spotlight in. Over here is a fill light. Let's do that real quick. So go to create lights spotlight. This one will not cast shadows. It will just be to wash out some of this black nastiness over yonder. Moving it up. Rotate it around, rotate it down, like that, probably pull the intensity down um, a little bit. Zoom in our toaster again, let's re-render that. Okay, so I, I like the way that looks. Um, I mean, obviously it could be better. Um, we could spend more time, we could put in more geometry details, we could set up a better set. Um, I want to change up a number angle on this. And I only want it to cast light. Well, I'll just tilt it down a little bit more. So it's not on the wall. we under that again, see where we're at. Okay, so this is looking good. Um, obviously it looks funny because it's reflecting this and then that's just gray, so we could put a texture on our walls. So we could make a Lambert, paint's usually Lambert in kitchens. Uh, middle click and drag your Lambert 2 onto your cube. I'm gonna hit my little color. Um, I don't know. Let's give it a checker just for fun. I'll render that real quick. Let's see where we're at. Okay, so the checker is way too big. Obviously. So let's go and change this to like 40 and 40. Re render that again.
Okay, so our floor is too reflective now. It's more evident. So it's like our fong. Pull our reflectivity down quite a bit. Right under that. It's better. Uh, that chrome is just a little too shiny, so. Let's pull the reflectivity down. Something closer there. Render it again, see if we're getting closer. Okay, so see the problem is now I down the reflectivity it made it appear um, darker. Um, so I'm just kind of over in my color, I'm just gonna pull that up, I'm gonna fake it. something like that looks more like a standard toaster so that was a, a really quick really quick and dirty toaster um, but that just shows you kind of the workflow kind of some of the tools you'll be using if you notice I didn't do any booleans there I stayed away from those um, I did for a reason because it's a good way to mess up your geometry early on um, I kept everything quads everything's 100% quads um, you could obviously play around with the lighting more, you could play around with the textures more, this is just a quick way uh, just to kind of show you what you could do. So uh, I hope this helped, I hope this was informative, um, and I hopefully will see you guys in my next video.